From the Independent News, this is USA Tonight with Brad Holbrook. Good evening. Today is Black Monday, the day the Dow dropped more than 500 points. The day the Dow dropped more than 22 percent, almost double the rate of the Black Monday that signaled the beginning of the crash of 1929. But this crash of 1987 is not just an American experience. Around the world, stock markets fell faster than a skydiver without a parachute. The panic starting in Tokyo this morning while the West slept. One cause of the sell-off was reaction to last week's 236-point drop in the Dow. The result, the Nikkei average was down 260 yen. Then, like a plague, cell fever headed west. In Frankfurt, fears of higher interest rates in the U.S. triggered the drop there. In two and a half hours of trading, the Commerce Bank share index fell 132 points. In London, an even larger drop. The British market trying to cope with Friday's national computer failure was thrown into a near panic. The result, the London Financial Times index down more than 183, the biggest one-day drop in Britain's history. And from there to Wall Street, where the numbers speak for themselves. Unofficially, the Dow stands at 1738.41 a drop of more than 508 points, with a volume of more than 604 million shares. Proof, as Alec Roberts reports, that the panic hit a fevered pitch. From the opening bell, the market was in free fall. After last Friday's record 108-point loss, analysts had expected a rally. Instead... Uh, every, it's a panic. Everyone's in panic. Everybody was trying to find a bottom. We're trying to, you know, I'm, as a floor broker, I, I see stocks trading 10 points below where they traded Thursday, and I'm saying, this, gotta be, this has to be the bottom. And then they trade five points lower than that. By noon, the market was down about 150 points. The tape delayed by more than an hour. But it only got worse as trading brokers struggled to cope with a blizzard of sell orders. New Mexico, we have some more to do. Since the market hit a high of 2,722 last August, it lost 17.5% of its value to 22.46 by Friday, and another 508 points today. More and more analysts believe that the bear market is here to stay. It's not that the economic news is so much worse. In fact, some indicators are showing unexpected strength. It's the psychology that's changed. While for five years, investors have looked at the economy as a glass that is half full, now they're seeing it as half empty. Reasons for the decline have been floating around for months. An accident waiting to happen, according to one analyst. Renewed inflation fears with a decline in the dollar, rising interest rates, and huge budget and foreign trade deficits, a nation living for too long beyond its means. The results of the decline will hit millions of people in their investments, pension plans, their mutual funds, and eventually every segment of the economy. Higher interest rates, for example, will hurt the housing market. Even normally optimistic analyst Larry Wachtel doesn't see a quick recovery. What usually happens in cases like these where the psychology has been so scarred is that once there is a technical rally back in which people unload on the rally, and you go through a long, quiet period. Uh, the people that got out don't want to get in. The people that wanted to get in aren't sure about that, whether they want to get in now. And so you go through a long, quiet, a convalescence period. President Reagan, however, was more optimistic. Our productivity is up, so is our manufacturing product up. There is no runaway inflation as there has been in the past. So, uh, as I say, I don't think anyone should panic. In New York, this is Alec Roberts reporting. Oh, but panic they did. Joining us now is Stephen Malin, senior, senior economist for the Conference Board, the country's largest business-sponsored research organization. Stephen, there is late word tonight. I don't want to spring, you on, spring this on you unawares that on the Tokyo Exchange, there's a little bit of a rebound, or actually they're calling it a strong rebound on the dollar market there. Would that be an indicator that things here might sweeten up tomorrow? Well, I don't know if that's a sign that things will sweeten up. It's a sign, that I think, that the people in Tokyo don't want to see any more pessimism in America. It's a mild sign of slight confidence, but it is not a sign of optimism at all. What would it take to stem the losses here? Well, tomorrow's indications would be that you, you would see a market which is much less violently up and down. If we see something which is down but not violently down, if we see volumes, trading volumes, which are not quite so large, 
I think we would see a sign that this is starting to stem. In terms of 1929, which everyone's comparing this to as saying it was double that in terms of percentage of loss, there are a lot of other things that don't match up with 1929 in terms of the economy. How do you assess uh, the effect this would have as opposed to the one in 1929? Well, this is a very different economy in the sense that it's a lot stronger economy, and most of all, it is a global economy. The 1929 economy did not have the openness of our markets. Mm -hmm. We are much more now a trading economy, an economy that relies on those foreign markets. And the key foreign market, as we learn today, is the financial market. And that, to me, is the big, big difference. Okay. Now, we have a lot of people that play with very big bucks in the financial markets. What about the rest of us who don't have more than a passing interest in the stock market? Should we be concerned or interested in what's going on? Oh, you better believe it. Everything that happened today should shake us up. First of all, people who have mortgages have to be concerned about their interest rates. Now, the interesting thing is that we're not going to see a violent rise in interest rates associated with this, and that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. But we might see a mild movement upward, and that's fine. What we may also see, however, is that savings plans and people who are involved in those are going to get hit because a lot of those are involved with mutual funds and people who are in mutual funds got hit hard very, uh, very, very well today. Mm -hmm. Now what about uh, looking at the blue chip stocks that everyone analyzes for mutual funds? They're very cheap tomorrow morning. Would you be interested in buying them this early? No, I wouldn't touch anything yet. What we're going to have to do is look at what happens when we wake up in the morning tomorrow and see what happened in the Asian and European markets. What could very well happen is that we're going to see signs of more chaos. And if mm -hmm. we do, then you want to stay out. Stephen, do you see any winners in what happened today? Well, I'd like to be a stockbroker cashing in on some of the commissions today. <laughs> Good point. A lot of activity there. Uh, Stephen Malin, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Elsewhere, America's richest man, Sam Walton, who's chairman of Walmart Stores Incorporated, was unaware of the market plunge for most of the day today. And when he was told about it, Walton said he'll take care of his company and the market can take care of itself. Walton controls about 218 million shares of Walmart stock, which means he just lost about a billion dollars today.